Hello everyone. Welcome to another video on C Sharp. I hope you are finding this playlist useful. In today's video, we will discuss about the functions with C Sharp or user defined function also known as user defined functions with C Sharp. As usual, we will use console application for the demonstration. So I have this console application project created. 115 for the demonstration if you look at this console application default structure we have got a namespace we have got a class and then we have got a static void main this is a function right which is ex accepting a string of array as an argument which is a parameter so before we try and understand the structure of a function let's look at some of the type of function so we have two type of functions one is the system defined function so there are various different type of functions which are available built in by c sharp which you can make use of it in fact we have used many of them in our previous demonstration and the other type of function you have is the user defined function a function type which you as a developer you define your own function your function structure and the behavior of that function and you use the os function in your logic so let's first of all understand a simple example of built in function so if you remember our string function video wherein we have used various method of string function so those functions which we have used of the string class which is obviously the string class is provided by microsoft c sharp so the functions available in that particular class was the built in functions provided by c sharp language in the c sharp in the string class take an example i'll declare a string variable let's say name and then i'll give some name value as in first name now i can use any of these functions let's say to upper one of the function i want to use it that's one of the function i would like to display this as an output so that will basically make upper case to this function now if i go to the definition of this function by pressing f12 or right clicking on this console menu item go to a definition that will take me to the definition of the c sharp class that's the class defined under the system dot runtime library it is a library which is automatically added inside our so that's the library system dot runtime that's one right now inside this c sharp class we have different number of functions so that's the c sharp string class right public partial class and then it has got number of function concat and all the function which we have seen so far right let's go to the definition of that again so this is a definition we are making it as in two upper and that re returns and result now if you carefully look at the signature of this is we have a access modifier the return type the name of the method and then the uh, parameter which it takes obviously we are not providing any parameter which means that we are making call to this function and this in terms is calling this particular function right good thing about the built in function it's a predefined functionality provided by microsoft dot net itself which we can make use of it you do not have to spend time on writing the line of code or your own logic to do the same task which is been already been provided so we can make use of it as and when you want right the disadvantage of the built in function is you cannot make changes to the function definition because it's been provided by them it's uh, delivered as an library so you can't make a change of that deliverable so it's not provided as a class which you can modify that it's a dynamic link library which is dll uh, you can't make the changes to that particular function there are ways to override the definition of the function which you look into the uh, later stage in future but for now in general you do not uh, that's a limitation you can't make the changes to the 
signature of the function or you can't make the change of the number of argument it takes or the body of the function and that is the reason it c sharp gives you an option basically to let's say create your own or define your own function the way you want right for an example a string class has many many functions but it does not have a function uh, to let's say count the number of words within the string so if i have a large paragraph with bunch of different words and if i want to count the number of words in that particular paragraph i don't have any built in function in a string class which can count the words so i that that comes in a requirement of defining my own own function so how do i define that to define any function any user defined function first of all you need to understand the structure of a function so the structure of the function looks like this axis type which means you have to define the axis modifier of public private internal this is this uh, the kind of axis modifier which you need to specify it is optional if you do not specify by default your function is access modifier becomes private then you have the modifiers with the function for example the modifier could be static virtual or here is an example we have the main function with a modifier as an static right next you have got the return type of a uh, function so you you have to define a return type for function it's a mandatory type you have to define it access modifier and modifiers are two optional type which optional property for a function you may or may not want to define it it takes a default value now return type is enough a uh, mandatory type you have to define a return type even if you your function does not return anything or if you want to define a function whereas your intention is not to return anything you still have to define the return type with the keyword void in case if you don't want to return anything if you want to return anything you can specify the return type of your function for example if my function returns an integer type of data then you can define the data type of your function if your function returns a class object or or an array object or list object then you can return define a reference type as well so return type could be a literal type or like integer decimal or it could be a reference type like class object dynamic things like that next you have to define the function name right the name of the function you define the name usually you give the name of the function as what is the objective of that particular function what things it requires to perform what is the output of that function uh, what is the job of that function it, it is supposed to do for example a function name name could be add which is responsible for adding the numbers as an example right function name could be get full name which can give you full name of a person by concatenating the first name and the last name right this is an example of that so it is again a mandatory type you could not have function without its name then you have the argument type which decorate inside this small brackets so you need to have after the name you need to have the small bracket opening opening small bracket then closing small bracket and inside these you can define the arguments of a function it is a optional type so your function can have or cannot have the argument type again argument type could be of literal type like integer decimal long or it could be of any object type string type or reference type basically plus you could have one or many type of or one or more arguments to your function is you can which you can specify i'll give you one example how does it looks like once that is defined the structure or the signature of your function complete so that's entire thing is treated as an structure of a function after the structure has been defined you start your function definition with the opening middle curly braces or opening curly braces and then closing curly braces anything which you write inside the curly braces that becomes the body of the function where you write the logic or the entire 
flow which your function is supposed to do for example if function is supposed to add two numbers you write a logic to add two numbers and basically return the information that it has added the number let's take a look at each of these type of functions so you have so you have four different type of functions for an example your function with no argument and no return type so example of that is let's say i have a function private i am going to specify the axis modifier i would like to specify the type as well because static i need to define because i want to use that function from there return type i want to have no argument a function with no argument no return type so i do not want any return type hence i am defining the return type as in void i'll say add to and i'm not passing any argument because that's our first type right and then we'll define the body how does it looks like so body could be let's say console dot write now line and i want to add two numbers so that's my function type now to use that function how do we use it you use this function type as in you need to call the function name and if your function is basically accepting any argument you have to provide the argument as my function is not accepting any arguments so that's it you have to put a semicolon which is a standard for c sharp uh, end of line syntax and that is it i will just simply use the console dot read line so that my program waits as i simply run this you will see that my function will return the result of adding two numbers as you can see the sum of two number 5 and 5 comma 4 comma 5 is 9 right that's one example another one which is the second one let's let's take a look at the second one function with an argument and no return type so we will copy the same function definition we will call it as an add number and this time we says function with an argument but no return type so we will say that int number 1 comma int number 2 we are pass providing the value of the number here we we'll use the number like this try and add these numbers now again i i need to call the in, in case add two numbers let me give just add two name of the function i want to make call we'll give it any random number here let's say this is how you provide the value of the function so this function is expecting two parameters number 1 and number 2 the value of number 1 we have given 12 the value of number 2 we have given this and that is going to execute this line of code and it will provide the sum of these two numbers let's run this now as the result the sum of two number 12 and 56 is 68 and that has calculated the number still we are not returning anything so now let's talk about our third type of function a function with no argument but with a return type so in this case we would have a function with no argument and with a return type right so return type is let's say we would like to return the result of these two numbers return two numbers result return the result of these two numbers so return type i would say as an integer with result okay and here is the value of that return i'll call this this function just to test it like this no arguments so we do not have to specify any argument to this function we we'll put it like this so that we know that which function is being printing the result that's add function without input without return type a function with an argument without return type a function without argument but with a return type and now finally we would have function with an argument with a return type which is a fourth option we have so we are going to have a number 1 and 2 that's what it is given on here and this is what we are going to do yes 
round it up and this is what the console line we are going to use so width input and result type that's the name of the function i'm going to give and i'll call the function name with any argument as you can see that this function accept two value variables i'll be providing the variable values or the argument values like this and obviously we can have the argument taken like this here as in result so you can say that result this is how you take the result as a variable of a return type of a function into a variable like this so this is another example similarly we can take an example the result of previous functions like that as well so you can't declare the same variable again in the same scope so i'm going to reutilize the same variable let's run that function again let's run the main program again and here is the result a function with return and result type so that's the result we have function no argument no return type function with argument no return type function with no argument return type function with argument and return type both now if you look at all of these functions are basically performing the same job which is calculating the sum of two numbers but we have given the name to each of these function as a differently but is it possible as the behavior or the nature of this function is to perform the calculation or the summation of two numbers is it possible can i give a same name to the function depending upon the behavior of the function actually yes you can give the same name to your function so the way you can do it is let's say i can give it the function name as an add and both of them will work fine let me just give it change the number value as here so here we have add with no argument here again we have add but this time we have two argument number one and number two this is called the method overloading right so what we are doing with the overloading is we are defining the same method signature it's just the difference we have in the method in terms of the argument which we are providing it could be the argument in this case we have to not in first one we don't have any argument second we have two argument i could have a function with another function with three numbers for an example right that will also work fine so we have a function as in number three type and we'll add number three as well that is again a method overloading right so let me just call it as any random number that will also work fine you can see that c sharp compile is not making any complaint about it so we have three flavors of the same addition method no argument two arguments and then we have three argument we can also do it like this i can have a function with a different type of argument for example i could have a argument as in double type in this case right or decimal type in this case so second function second value is going to be a decimal type right that will also work fine if i try and utilize the same type some different number it is going to work fine now in this case of course if i would press the value like this this will return the result of these three numbers so this knows that it it will require to make a call to the third function which we have declared because we are processing the value as in double type whereas if i pass the value of number type then compiler automatically knows that in this case it requires to call a function which is expecting a second parameter as an integer type right so depending upon the type of parameter you pass compiler automatically or the you, your code will automatically jump to a specific function definition now i could have a function i could have a function with a same definition but in the return type i could put a return type as in double for an example right and then i'll return the result of this as in return type 
double and that will work fine provided I would have a different signature for an example this is if this could be a double then this will work fine right so the overloading of the function works if the signature of the function changes you can see that we have a variety of different signatures no signature two variables both integer three variables both integer three variables two integers one double three variables two double one integer and here in this case we have a different return type as well so still it is working fine but if i make it int which is matching the signature with the same type then compiler says that you already have a add, me add method which is matching the exact signatures you can't have the add method or the method name add which is matching the exact signature respective one method is returning nothing and other method is re trying to return something so method overloading or the function overloading only works if you change make changes to the num the variety of different type of parameters to or the signature of the uh, different argument type of that function right that's about the method overloading so this is how you use the method overloading in this case right let me just delete it we'll try and run again as you can see that all of them are working fine and we have got same method name with a different signature type i have i hope you have got the idea about the defining the function defining the type of the uh, defining or using the method overloading with c sharp we'll see some more videos on functions with classes and other types like function overlay like using the access modifier and all in our future videos till then keep watching the other videos which we have in this channel and do let me know if you have any comments which i can give you an answer thanks for watching it see you in the next video